This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about adjustable jaw pliers. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is adjustable jaw pliers, and we're going to go over kind of the difference between these variants of adjustable jaw pliers. Uh, we are going to be talking about, you know, these wide jaw style, um, kind of ignoring traditional pliers which are technically adjustable jaw. They have two settings, wide and not wide. But, uh, yeah, pardon the rust, these are like my, my junkyard pliers. But, you know, there's not much really to say about these things other than be careful, you're going to damage your bolts with them. But uh, we'll ignore these for now. Um, not really many features to go over. So, uh, channel locks are kind of the ubiquitous, you know, what people think of when they're talking about adjustable jaw pliers. The way they work is there is a rivet that is the pivot point, of course. Um, and the way you adjust the jaw width is you open the jaws all the way, which then takes this little fin, I guess, and eliminate or pulls it all the way away from those grooves. And these grooves are the various depths. So that is its open as far as it can go, and then it can kind of go in any slot in between. You know, not terribly precise. Uh, you know, you only have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven options along the height of that uh, upper jaw. That's how it works. You, when you're, when you're using it, you want to adjust it to where it's roughly the size of the bolt you're grabbing onto. Um, you, know, you can see that you can get it pretty parallel like that. So you want to have as much even pressure on as much surface area as you can so that when you're you know really putting a lot of pressure on it, you aren't putting pressure on the tips, you know, the, the edges of your bolt because that will round it over. So like if you, you know, kind of grabbed it off, like that, and then put a bunch of pressure on it, you're you're putting lots of focused pressure on there, and you could round the bolt over. So these are the Kinepex Cobra pliers. Now, the way you pronounce that word is Kinepex, not Nipex. You can watch the various from Germany videos about their tools, and they say Kinepex pretty consistently. Kinepex. So these are the, the Cobra pliers, uh, kind of a roughly similar mechanism to this, except that there are many, many more teeth down that upper jaw channel. The way you adjust the height is instead of opening the jaws fully, because you can't open them beyond, I don't know, whatever they've determined to be reasonable. Instead, you press this button, which is it's a little bit hard to see, but like the top half of it is smooth and the bottom half of it is toothed. So when you push it down, you have the smooth part in that channel, which allows it to move up and down. And then it is spring loaded with this little leaf spring that pushes it back up into place, which pushes the teeth back to engaged. And that's where the jaw stays. Uh, there are multiple teeth that engage at a time. So it's, it's very sturdy. It's not like there's one tooth per side or something like that. Uh, if something were to happen to this, this is rebuildable. Like you can unscrew that, take the spring out, take the button out, you know, if you needed to. You shouldn't need to, of course. Uh, so when you adjust it for uh, what screw you need, um, or fastener head or whatever, uh, you know, you get it to about the height you want, and then you trying to get it to balance on the teeth. Uh, well, you heard that snap at one point. There you go. So, you know, you want it to snap into position, which it obviously wants to do. Uh, and then... Oh, good guess. Uh, the idea is to get it to where it's, you know, flat. The The two serrated parts are able to be flat on the surfaces of the fastener, assuming that you're talking about a good condition fastener. And then this little lip here is about 30 degrees, as is the one back there, which gives you, you know, a little bit of additional, a little bit of additional support. It's not exactly 30 degrees, but it makes it so the bolt doesn't want to slide around. Um, which, you know, any extra support you can get, especially when you're fighting with something and uh, 
not able to use the correctly sized wrench, any extra support you can get isn't a bad thing. So yeah, that's how these work. And then lastly, we have these Robo Grips, which uh, I think these are before they were owned by Craftsman. Now it's a Craftsman tool. These are pretty old. And uh, the way these work is it's this kind of double pivoted mechanism here. And when you put something in the jaws, that pressure causes, you know, causes the pivot to shift from here to here. And when that happens, and this is spring loaded, there's a spring inside here pushing up on this little arm. This pivots and engages with these teeth that you can see there. So it's a little bit like this, but a little, little bit like the kidney backs. But instead of having a button actuation, it's a it's a pivot thing. And then they're they're kind of like spring loaded in there as well. So because you can like if you hold it open and pivot it and then let it close. You can hear it snapping, but then you can't push it back open further until you release it all the way. Try that again. So, but then it's locked. Uh, one of the things I kind of don't like about these tools, so it starts out, before you put pressure on it, you know, these, this surface and this surface are flat-ish. But when you press down, it pivots away. So now we only really have support at the top of this bolt, and the bottom is right on that tip, which puts a lot of pressure on it. So getting it where it has full support and you're not kind of doing damage to the tips of the bolt head or, or nut, kind of, it's not my favorite. You know, I, I end up leaving this for kind of non, non-standard needs. I, I, I would not choose to use it on a fastener that I cared about. Um, and it just doesn't do that great of a job because it doesn't have that full support. So it wants to slip and doesn't do as good of work as either of these two do. Um, also, this this is made very curiously. Um, no judgment on its strength. I mean, it, it seems to be quite strong. I, I'm, you know, I'm not super kind to these things and uh, they've been holding up. But you can see it's like laminated metal. So it's kind of like kind of like a master lock where it has a bunch of plates of metal that are then riveted together. And the two parts and then you know this part of the frame is just the two outer pieces of metal this inner part is like pinched down and then back around this thing that holds the pivot like it's just a it's a curious it's a curious construction i mean i i'm guessing it's cheaper than forging and having to grind and all that stuff but uh you know i can't i can't imagine this is as as strong uh, as durable as one of these two, if like you had to do something where you're twisting it, you know, the wrong direction or something like that. Um, now, this does come with, or doesn't come with, you can get like rubber tips that go over here that that make it so that it's kind of a soft jaw plier. And then I do use it for, for stuff around woodworking. Like um, th this is kind of my go-to if I need to like pull out, like say I, I dry fit um, uh, dominoes uh, and, you know, or, or dowels or whatever. I totally use these to, to pull them out with the rubber tips on it because you can weasel out um, the wooden stuff and, and then the angle of attack doesn't matter as much uh, as long as you're not like going crazy with it. It's just something to give grip uh, and the rubber tips make it so that I'm not damaging whatever it is that I'm pulling apart. So I do use them for that, but uh, a little bit less so with, with uh, fasteners and such. Yeah. Oh, last thing. Um, head size. So as you can see, the head of this thing is quite big compared to channel lock, much bigger. And then let's put this all the way at the bottom. Compared to that, even a bit smaller. The the cobra is even smaller. So I mean, these things are. I think of the three, the cobras are the most sturdy. I mean, uh, Kinepex is definitely known for. Uh, just having incredibly durable tools. And so that it is also the smallest head to fit into the tightest confines, you know, I'll be honest, this is my, my favorite of the, of the three and Kinepec stuff in general is top notch. And this is one feature why, uh, you know, they, they paid attention to that sort of thing of, of having the head size be a consideration. You know, it's a, it definitely can fit into very snug locations.
So I think that's it for adjustable jaw pliers. If you find content like this interesting, please consider subscribing. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.